Hi, boys and girls and parents. Um, I sent you all an email this weekend and I sent a lesson plan for May 4th. Hopefully you all got it. And in that lesson plan, we add, since we can't get packets to you right now, um, we sent a few things. I sent a um, Mother's Day craft that looks like this. So siblings or dads, maybe you can help your um, children to, to um, do this craft for mom. You can cut it out using white paper or you can just cut it out like it is. They can color it really pretty or, or however they want to decorate it. They could add hearts. I know I have some really creative students. There's a little poem at the top that says, I will try my best to every way to be extra sweet on Mother's Day. But if I become, if you become upset with me, just relax and have a cup of tea. And there it is. They can cut out the heart. They can leave the top open. No glue at the top. Glue the bottom and glue their heart on and stick a tea bag inside. And that will be a cute little gift to remember on Mother's Day. So have fun, boys and girls, and, and wish your mom a very happy Mother's Day this coming Sunday, okay? Moms do a lot for us, don't they? Okay, there we go. Also, there is a pattern paper. If you go to ABC Mouse, and Miss Jill sent you the link, so make sure you take advantage of that. Um, if you haven't, go in, and you can put your child's name and put a level in by their age. Um, then um, you can go to options on ABC Mouse Home, and there are a lot of printables. So I chose one for today, which is called Plenty of Patterns. And I know my class is really good at patterns, and this one was a nice one. So at the bottom, it shows you can cut out the pictures and finish the patterns on each line. So you can figure out if that's a violin, drum, violin, drum, violin. I think that's a guitar. <laughs> guitar, drum, guitar, drum, guitar. What comes next? That's right, a drum. So you can have fun during that paper. Remember, go to options and go to printables. This one would probably be under math section, okay? And then while you're there, we're ready for number 31. And so you can go also, same place, options, and you can find the number 31. So what family is 31 in, boys and girls? That's right, the 30 family, because it starts with a three and a one. So you can trace, and then you can make your own 31s. So you'd have your three and your one, your three and your one, and then just continue. Also for this week, we have, um, we're gonna try to finish out our numbers. So here's number 32. You can do that one on Tuesday. On Wednesday, you can do number 33. So what number do you think of being a number 33? Start with the three. 33. Good job. And then comes 34. So 34 would be a three and a four. And then you might want to print one more so we can be up to 35 on Friday. Okay? All right. Good job. So you can work on those all week. Should we count to number 35 for fun today? Let's see if you can do it. We'll do motion so we'll be moving around. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Wow, that was easy. We went a little bit farther, so we went all the way up to 40. What number would 40 be in? That's right. The 40 family, because it starts with a four. Okay, good job. Since this is Mother's Day, I have one of my favorite Mother's Day stories. Mothers always watch over us, most of the time, don't they? And they keep us safe, and they read us stories, and they cook us dinner, and they wash our clothes, and we could just go on and on and on and on. Can you think of all the things that your mother does for you? That's too many to name. So make sure you really show mom lots of love on Mother's Day on Sunday. So here's a story called 
Rosemary Wells, Hazel's Amazing Mother by Rosemary Wells. There it is. There's Hazel and her mother. Front cover, back cover, and spine. So Rosemary Wells wrote this book and illustrated it also. So she did the pictures and the words. And this book is for Eleanor and Hubbard White. And that's the title page dedicated to her children. So here we go. Hazel's Amazing Mother. And while I'm getting my glasses on, I want to say hi to everybody this morning and happy Monday. Because it is a brand new week and a brand new month. So here we go. Hazel's mother gave Hazel a nickel and a kiss and said, buy something nice for our picnic. I will, said Hazel, and she wheeled Eleanor's carriage down the street. There she is. Well, who is Eleanor? Oh, Eleanor is her baby. Yeah. Go. That's her doll, her special doll. Hazel stopped to help the mailman. I see Eleanor has new shoes, said the mailman. My mother made them, said Eleanor. Eleanor's shoes were sky blue silk. Good morning, said the policeman. I see Helen Eleanor has a new dress. My mother made it, said Hazel. Eleanor's dress was calico with French lace trim. What a nice mother. He went all those things for Eleanor's doll, for her doll, Eleanor. Such a pretty doll, said the baker. My mother made her, said Hazel. The baker gave Hazel a buttercream rose. Hazel bought two cookies from the baker, one for herself and one for Eleanor. Since Eleanor couldn't open her mouth, Hazel ate them both. With her, with her last three pennies, she bought some grapes from the fruit lady, and a piece of toast with jam from the jelly man. Can you find your way home, little girl? asked the first fruit lady. Oh, yes, answered Hazel. But in the next corner, Hazel made a wrong turn. Oh, dear. That could be bad, couldn't it? After that, she took another wrong turn and another wrong turn until she found herself on a lonely hilltop in a part of town where she had never been before. What do you see in that picture? Mm, do you see that soccer ball? Yeah. I see some kids down there, somebody's fishing. Yeah. Don't worry, Eleanor, said Hazel. We'll find our way back. Just then a boy's voice rang out, Hey, Doris, someone's stealing our ball. In a flash, Hazel was surrounded. What should we do, Doris, asked the other boy. If she's going to play with our ball, said Doris, then we're going to play with her doll. Oh, dear. Did Hazel steal her ball? How did it get in that carriage? Do you remember? It was flying in the air and it just landed there, didn't it? Eleanor was tossed from hand to hand. Off came her blue silk shoes. Stop, Hazel shouted. Higher and farther they threw her. Off came her calico dress. Out came her stuffing. No, pleaded Hazel. But she was powerless to stop them. Poor Hazel, how do you think she feels? Yeah, she's pretty scared and sad right now, isn't she? Whoa. When they had finished with her, Eleanor was little more than a rag. Eleanor, my Eleanor, said Hazel. Let's ride the carriage down the hill, said Doris. Hazel rocked poor Eleanor in her arms. She heard the carriage splash into the pond at the bottom of the hill. Oh, mother, she cried. I need you, mother. What do you see in the sky? Is it still a pretty blue sunny sky? Oh, poor Hazel. Looks like it might come up a big lot. 
you said storm, I think you're right. At just that moment, on the other side of town, Hazel's mother was picking the tomatoes for their picnic. Something told her Hazel needed her. A drop of rain fell, and then it began to pour, and a great wind sprang up. It blew the picnic blanket over the garden wall. Hazel's mother caught hold of it, but the wind was too strong. That is some strong wind, isn't it? It swept the blanket, Hazel's mother, the picnic basket, and down the tomatoes over the treetops as if they were no heavier than the blowing leaves. The blanket filled with air and ballooned out and sailed over town. Quite an adventure for Hazel's mother, isn't it? I think I would be scared up there in a storm. At last, it lodged in the very tree where Hazel was sheltered from the rain. Doris and the boys were about to run home when Hazel's mother's voice boomed out from overhead. Wait just a minute. A tomato hit Doris smack between the eyes. Don't make a move without fixing Eleanor, Hazel's mother roared. Who are you? Doris squealed. It's my mother, said Hazel. Here we go. Find Eleanor's dress and shoes, rumbled Hazel's mother. Restuff her and sew her up as good as new. Hazel's mother tossed her pocket sewing kit down to Doris. It was followed by three more tomatoes. The boys quivered like jello. It was all Doris's fault, they yelled. Hazel's mother laughed thunderously. Fish that carriage out of the pond and clean it up, she told them. His mother is amazing, isn't she? The boy scrubbed feverishly. Doris sewed like a machine. Above them, the sun came out and the clouds slipped away. Eleanor's carriage worked without a squeak. Eleanor was perfect except for her eyes, which Doris could not find in the grass. The moment Doris and the boys left, Hazel's mother dropped to the ground. Hazel's mother found the eyes and sewed them back on with Hazel while well, Hazel ate a sandwich. Oh, mother, said Hazel, how did you do it? It must have been the power of love, said Hazel's, Hazel's mother. The power of love, the love of a mother. Here they are. Having their picnic at last. Who saved the day? Hazel's mother, of course. Then they picked up and went home. Hazel took two lady fingers, one for herself and one for Eleanor. But since Eleanor couldn't open her mouth, Hazel ate them both. Isn't that a great Mother's Day story? Hazel's amazing mother, and she certainly was amazing, wasn't she? So, and you all have amazing mothers too, don't you? So. Don't forget to say Happy Mother's Day next Sunday, and I'll see you again on Wednesday. So until then, all of my friends, I wish you well. Put your hand on your heart. Let's just wish everyone well. One, two, three. We wish you well. Bye, boys and girls. See you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.